venir uh, y quedarse a esta parte del día uno de la Patricia Parma y Janet, who are ready to present session in the quest for the drama Gabi as the receiver of the film, the grant from the LMDA in 2019, and now she's going to tell us what she has done with the money. Hello there, everybody. thank you for being part of this. Thank you for those of you who are watching through, through streaming services. Now, before we go into this uh, topic at hand, I'm going to talk to you about how the project came to be, where the idea came from. In Mexico, no Mexico there, we don't have specialized schools in um, the education of dramaturgs, only a few subjects from the undergraduate degrees in theater in the, uh, at the university have this. We study, we have five areas, acting, design, production, theater, theory and dramaturgy, dramaturgy. And, but, but when it comes mostly to the creation and um, of text like uh, you would say the formation of a playwright not the way in which you would understand us uh, the actual work of a dramaturg and in the sense the teachers that give these subjects are uh, how deal with, with production design and theater theory and specifically that one which is the one that actually encompasses uh, dramaturgy but we don't have specific subjects in any school in the country so every teacher or professor decides how deep they want to go into the topic and after observing this Panorama, the objective of the exhibition was to open an area of experimentation for young dramaturgs in Mexico. And uh, the first thing I can think of uh, was uh, listening to this word, which is expedition, was the idea of a journey, of a trip. So this part is not a literal, but a metaphorical trip because doing research deals with actual traveling to re to encountering yourself, to sharing information. This is how I recognize the work of a dramaturg. The expeditions begin individuality, but the findings are shared. This expedition, the LMDA gave the wanted to be part of this patronage effort without the these uh, without this organization the project would have never seen the light of day all the teams need, need a part of the olympic to become consolidated and that's why i have paloma bonilla and janet villa with me as well as celeste diaz and Jasmine Cato, who unfortunately couldn't join us, but we'll be, we'll join. We also have the names of other creators that were part of this journey. So the project began in 2019 and experimented the changes brought about by the pandemic. So we shared different examples from both at an individual world. In broadest uh, terms, the expedition consisted of three stages. The presentation is actually moving, but it should be moving. Could anybody help us with that, please? So in other terms, this is the three stages. And the first off, this is where we uh, traced our phase of exploration and moment of creation. These stages will be um, explained by my colleague. You will see now the first part of the internet will be will tell you of the findings of the first stage. I will talk to you specifically of my experience in the workshop. And uh, Gabby asked us at some point, what were the experiences and the gains throughout uh, this process and the time that we have shared this October because October 2019, we began working together 
En ese taller nos encontramos. Yeah, uh, uh, a Paloma, we had a workshop. Yo. workshop yo. Diego Paloma. Es importante decir que las personas que nos están en este taller tenemos más certezas que hace una dramaturgia. Pero tenemos más certezas que hace una dramaturgia. Pero tenemos más certezas que hace una dramaturgia. ¿Y qué hace una dramaturgia? Pues después de las primeras dos sesiones, After the first two después, sessions, we go left and we, only the people from the faculty of philosophy and arts are left. I remember that in the first session, Gabby talked about studies and PhD studies and doctorates in order to become a dramaturg, but we are here in Mexico. And unfortunately, there are no places to become a specialist in this line of work. And this is a self-learning journey. Uh, journey. So, where have you heard of this particular collaborator who has seen in practice? Have you ever worked with a one? Well, many of us have had a, a link with a dramaturg, and this is why we were there gathered. And this is how the workshop began in a specific area of questions. As travelers, we began to build a common ground to dialogue from our divergencies. And at the end of the workshop, Diego couldn't continue. and. Only Gabi, Paloma, Celeste, Jasmine, and myself were left. In order to build an installation from the findings that we had from this workshop, we decided to work together. And if I were to think of whatever happened there, for me, it was an amazing experience. Why? Because I found uh, partners that were in the process of actually becoming bona fide parameters, like it is my case, or that were maybe interested in exploring the side of the work line. And everybody was ultimately interested in dramaturgy and what it does working with dramaturg entail. In the end. When it comes to the workshop, I was in a process of doing lab work with the teatro, and we needed a person to be part of the research work that implied this new Phoenix lab. And because I heard of this line of work, I, I surmise that we needed the services of a dramaturg. And this is how I started what I wanted to do. I would find myself with these women. And to me, that was an enriching experience to be part of this expedition because other than just doing a historical recount of what we were doing and put on the table the work that we had engaged into, it was also it provided a space in which we could reappropriate the word of the dramaturg in Mexico. And what was the collective mean well we made decisions in the joint position guided by gabby who was very open to let us make decisions after listening we built an an intimate area of exploration amongst ourselves to establish bridges in our clinic proposals and the spaces in which we generated thoughts and I struggle recant where does the drama word drama come from well, we approached the first critic who ever thought of the audience, blessing the classes we had in our undergraduate degrees. We heard him by name only. And so at the beginning of the workshop, we didn't really know of this particular individual and of his work. So we started to study him and those who in themselves as dramaturgs. And that made everything so clear to us. It is important to point out that the bibliography that we um, approached appealed to Latin American voices, which it was very difficult to find researchers that named them, themselves as dramaturgs. And we also found a very a lot of uh, problems in translating dramaturg and dramaturgist into Spanish, because unfortunately, it's not compiled in our Spanish dictionary. To make the work of the dramaturg and dramaturgy, what exactly is that? This question has been part of us. And for me, it was quite significant because it modified the way in which I do theater. Of course, it is not just the text. It is also the space in itself, the context, the musicality and the organization. All of those who designed something for the stage are dramaturgs of the stage. That is, they do the work of a dramaturg. And in through the uh, appearance of new words like dramaturgical, dramaturgism, etc., etc., we had to 
coming to agreements as to how we would, what we would call our line of work. We are dramaturgs and go throughout the city, sharing a cup of coffee and enriching the scene, questioning the models of production because at an institutional level, our work is not visible yet. We're not in uh, normal payrolls. And when we talk to other collaborators, they tell us, well, what you do is interesting, but is it entirely necessary to have a person like that? And for us, asking what we were doing was a complex quest because we were to think of the scenic modes of production in Latin America and Mexico, we realize that whatever role you perform, whether you're a dramaturg, director, a scenographist, a actress, choreographer, assistant, and so on and so on, you would end up not working in your area, but you actually would go into the areas of others, you could lead in the areas of others. This is why it is important to actually name the work of a dramaturg as for what it is because we create a record and the memory of what, what happens if we put on the table how significant our line of work is. That's how we wanted to look for new dramaturgs in the, into the Mexican stage because we had other spaces at the UNAM University and so we talked to each other, we realized that this particular figure didn't exist. Why? Because we don't have a faculty to teach you specifically that. We also realized that this premise was obsolete and think that the way in which we do our line of work is not the same and it doesn't correspond to an academic need, but a practical one. What happens when you work with a person that is actually in charge of making sure that the creative processes and the science really happen? If we have this basis, then the results can be extraordinary. And this is where the dramaturg appears. They expand in a cross-cutting fashion. So the workshop was a place in which we generated our own tools of experience. We thought of new places in which we could work at as a dramaturg, museums, literature, links with music, dance, and film, and festival arts. Amongst others, we did our research, we played, and we learned new trades as a response of the process. I remember that at some point when we were building the installation that we will, Paloma will talk to you about, uh, at, some, at some point, we, we wanted to look for names of dramaturgs in the programs. And for me, that was quite uh, fun and exciting. Try to find uh, programs, and we saw that we would appear there in the name of the programs. Uh, amongst other memories that I trash, that I keep close to my heart, is Gabby told us that we, we were to think of 10 words that would define. Uh, the work of the dramaturg, and for me, it is actually very complicated to be concise, so I would face the stereotype, the post-stereotype of the dramaturg and structure, structure dramaturg that would be formed in academia. So in this process, I realized that I am not part of the stereotype, and that when I saw my peers working, I realized that they work from uh, different um, perspectives and different practices without um, you know, having to ensure that other groups would know how to do the research because in the end we're young dramaturgs you know do new research and to be think outside of the box you know, the, push the envelope, if you will, to be fair and to find new tools and that we could learn together. This workshop made me more critical of myself and asked myself of the type of work that I wanted to do as a dramaturg. You think this is what this is so valuable because although the dramaturg is critical to them, himself or herself and others, they have to be critical of their processes and be, take care of each other because the dramaturg is there to become a mediator of a conflict. That could be complicated. That can be complicated. And for me to have been with Celeste, Hans, Gabby, and Paloma offered an opportunity to rethink theater from another standpoint, a, a standpoint of 
emotional and constructive criticism. And to be a dramaturg means to break away from the molds of production where in the past the only one who did this work was the director. If there's something that we like as dramaturgs, it is to make creation something collective as well as research, make it collective and at all times appealing to the other, the observer. I would now ask Hasmin, who is going to uh, show us a video that she carried out, is now going to talk about the last part of our workshop. Hello, my name is Jasmine. I'm a dramaturg and a Mexican woman. If I think about this workshop, I'm thinking on a large scale. And then we can draw up the work of an expedition here as a dramaturg in Mexico. And I would rethink the workshop as a space of constant reflection and creation, precise creation. And we will explain a little bit what the work of the dramaturg over history entails. During the workshop, we were thinking about not just the European origin, but also the work of Mexican dramaturgs women and we touched on the need of dramaturgs and now we know that there are different situations and many voices that we found we found out that there were many people working here and many people who did fall in love with this work. So what we began exploring in the workshop consisted in determining what our job precisely was going to be, what our image was to be, and our place in the Mexican scene. Those three factors were something that directed us uh, throughout the workshop. And then when Gabi told us that we had to come up with an idea of how to resort to the different files, but the source of this video is very distorted. We are doing our best. We've, these are spaces we're allowed to think, we're allowed to build on this. In one of the sessions, Gabi sat us down and said, think a little bit about what these places bring to mind. And certainly, we were thinking about the space and how we build metaphors here and for this installation we were going to have to build something new out of it so we began on this journey of discovery and on the messages that were going to accompany us we looked at certain images and i took notes copious notes and these are with me at all times. There are moments and memories and thoughts that lead us to think about things from a different perspective. Also with me at all times is this little book. It's a small notebook that never left my side throughout the process. A notebook and 
It was our travel companion. And uh, there's a cactus plant here, and I don't know why, but as a dramaturg, uh, we carry uh, several totems around with us. And we were trying to trying to build four dramaturgs from dramaturgs and the world that is starting to take notice of us. This goes back to the idea of thinking that sometimes we are in a workspace and we are seated and in a dialogue and this means of communication and the producer sitting in the director's chair or what about the designer's chair? What about the actor's chair? What do these all look like? What about the dramaturg's chair? And it was a huge step forward to confront this. And very often, the dramaturg like to be behind a closed door, looking at the scene unfolding, whispering. And I think it's a magical figure. And a group of dramaturgs trying to understand how to go about this. It was a confrontation for us. And in my case, it opened up my mind to rethink my work. The passion that dramaturgs face elsewhere, we also face it here and embrace it in Mexico, this passion. Somebody who is watching, who is listening, who is thinking not just about the work, but everything that it entails, it is constantly on our mind. It's crazy. It's revolutionary. Okay, that was Haas. And now let's move to this next step, which is exploration. And Paloma is going to talk to us about this aspect. The expedition. There is a matter here of the idea of setting up and tearing down, the idea of being part of a whole. In essence, the guiding thread that grants us this presence. This workshop launched us headlong into the universe with several questions. What is a dramaturg? What does a dramaturg do? How do they exist in what sphere? And the question that Gabriela had already asked and that opened up the discussion here, what does it look like here in Mexico? In due time, this process gave back to us, to ourselves. And it's the idea of the mirror here. And then we realized that the, this last question, how is it that the dramaturg prevails in Mexico, was pulling along another question. How can we make the dramaturg and her work tangible here. It might seem obvious, but it turned out being the key to all of this. Nobody lives in a void and nobody lives within an abstract idea. So we began there to think about and ask ourselves questions. And we realized that one of the guiding threads here was going to be the manner in which we inhabit the world. And uh, the way that we're doing this goes through what we are thinking about, what we are absorbing. But these objects 
that we are using to carry out our work as well are a part of our integral presence. So as I said, these objects took on the role of a guiding thread, a compass were it, now that we're talking about an expedition and our guiding star. The baggage that we began to work on in the workshop began to turn into something else when we added on this physical baggage. The time came, as occurs in all projects, where we let the tension ease away and we began to expand and feel more comfortable with the process. And there were times when we began to click amongst ourselves and play and become familiar. And this happened to me, and I'm sure it was as rich for the rest of them, because that's where we were able to discover that hive of things happening and I go back to what Hasmin said in the video. Why a cactus? Janet, do you want to answer this question? Why a cactus? Yes. It has to do with, it's a metaphor, a really nice one, a cool one about our work, referring to our work, our resistance over time and how it is that although we are taking part in a scene that looks like a desert for our work, we're right there and we're blooming, flourishing, working together. And this cactus has two baby cacti, and this is how we expand. Very well, then, as a result of this convergence and creating of connections and making sure that this world would be increasingly complex and uh, growing, we began to see a number of things happening, but we also realized something very important. And... Uh, Literally, the light bulb came on regarding how important it is to stand by one another. And we realized that we needed someone to become that ever-present presence. And that's how we reached this idea of having a guide and a trigger for the interaction that we wanted to have with our participants, with our audience. And what we were looking at right there, we didn't want to leave anyone alone and out of it. And I say because this because the pandemic happened. And until that time, we had quite a bit of work already done, three different stages, three different aspects of the work of the dramaturg that we had divided on as a mediator with collaborators, the dramaturg also as a researcher and organizer. And precisely, as I mentioned a second ago, this connection with the audience, being with the audience, and a couple of other things that we had uh, thought of developing. But so that you might have a clear idea of what this activation of the installation entailed, we can read the letter that Celeste left with us. Janet, please do so.
a process for staging with five dramaturgs, dramaturgs as creatures of creation and action. The process for the installation was very short. One month before being interrupted by the global crisis, we were trying to reconcile our will as dramaturgs and trying to lend meaning and listen to each one of the things we were receiving. It wasn't easy and it certainly wasn't fast because in our process, we were able to characterize our research in practice as well. And the dramaturg did not stay seated and behind the play, playbook, but became part of the action and transformed it with the actor. This link, which is not uh, opposite as we were taught in school, the actor receives and allows the comments to reside in the dramaturg in practice, but at the same time develops research processes and dramaturgy on his or her own. We could say that this was especially fruitful if it were to be carried out in all processes. Joining efforts would appear to be an oxymoron, practice, research, uh, calm, energetic, action, contemplation, thinking, doing, seat, scenario, dramaturg, actor. To be an actor in light of a stage is also launching oneself into the void, trusting in the eyes of those who are watching you. And the most intimate link, in my opinion, is created with the dramaturg. It is not exactly who it is that is going to tell you what to do and what not to do, but rather opening the road up before you, like uh, that uncle who is not as harsh as your father may be with you, but may contain chaos and even be a mediator in the differences between the director and actor. To act in front of so many dramaturgs represents a challenge of listening and exciting stimulation as well. In our process, the decision to become the activation actor in the installation, the first time we uh, performed, made me think about self-inflicting as though it were a crime, actions of a dramaturg while we were on stage. And finally, concili reconciliation took place for the actor also commits acts of dramaturgy. Very well. Having this background, this these foundations, we can tell you that this moment was precisely one where we were very close together, where we were being and doing everything one for another, breaking away from these hierarchical structures and arriving at the idea of horizontal aspects from deconcentration and from these circles. So let me tell you in major terms how far we reached with this exploration. And I would like to remind you of the three times here, the dramaturg as a mediator, which was very quickly explained. And here in exploration, we reached a very clear image, as Hasmin said, where we began thinking about chairs. And we began to think about, okay, what does the dramaturg's chair look, look like compared to the designer's or the director's chair, etc. And this is where this came into play. We are the subjects with what we are doing. Those chairs were representing these objects, these objects that they were using. And we also had a soundtrack that provided everything you might hear at a theater during the creation process. These chairs or seats could be taken apart. They weren't solid like these chairs that you see on stage and the ones you are seated on. In order to encourage Celeste to activate them by creating new links, by taking them apart and creating new ones, this helped us to reach the next moment in time. And that was the moment where the researcher and organizer came into play. And here we added some other elements. We now had additional tubes and the soundtrack was going to change a bit.
In this case, the soundtrack was that of a city. And that precisely led us to the transition. The transition to the city woke us up and there was a phrase. It was like saying being Godzilla on this drawing here. And let me tell you why we said to be like Godzilla. We realized that we were creating a linkage between our reality, our macro reality, and the micro reality in which we invited the audience to take part. And that is directly where these began to be participants. And here, here we were inviting them to shape this reality, to mold it, so were it. The third phase was the connection with the audience. We were relying on the fact that there would be very close rapport. And then we reached a third short phase. And it was then when the pandemic struck. So we were in, unable to continue making progress. And with this, we moved to our next phase, which we called Expedition in Times of the Pandemic, during which recent circumstances posed a challenge for every single one of us. And it was an exercise in real time for our expedition. And I'll tell you why. Throughout our exploration, there were some phrases that this activating guide was going to use. We had these words, persistence, resilience, patience, ability to adapt in light of a crisis. These are fundamental elements for any expedition, for life itself, for theater, and for the path that the dramaturg embarks on. And this became an experience, an overwhelming one, because we found ourselves launched into a new terrain, new circumstances where we had to readapt and reshape everything that we had before us. We had to come up with a new process to open up different systems and continue functioning. We had to adapt, we had to resist, and as I said, building and rebuilding as of all of that that we had already found. So this soundtrack that we had in place began little by little to become what is next, and that is a podcast. And here is where I will leave you with Gabriela, who can explain a little bit where we are heading with this podcast. Although the installation wasn't carried out, the material that we had began to adapt to our new reality. As Paloma said, we found in the soundtrack a new path to embark on where we couldn't be together physically, but yet there were meeting points. We interviewed different creators at the beginning, face to face, and then during the pandemic through various digital means. Critiques, directors, actors, journalists, among others, a few dramaturgs, because the idea was to raise up the presence of the dramaturg through other voices. We wanted to create a soundtrack, and the guiding question was, what does the dramaturg in Mexico sound like? But the vast amount of information that we secured gave us enough material to create five podcasts. And Eric Guerrero and Josh Varela joined efforts with us, and they helped us to come full circle with his work. We will now listen to our first edition of the podcast, the first one. And I would ask the technicians to help us with the podcast, playing it.
No sé si alguien nos puede... Ah, gracias. Gracias. Great. Thank you for your help. Sí, denle click. Just click on it. No, solo click. Al Just video. one click. No, no, no. Click al video. Click on video. Exacto, ahí en la flechita. Please click on the arrow in the center. I think that's how we're going to get our soundtrack. We hear a cacophony of background noise. Thank you. 
yo creo que si, si hablamos de, de figuras importantes eh, y mediadoras, eh, yo creo que lo que tendría que hacer es empezar a, 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 a movilizar el imaginario de todo el sistema completo. Thank you. It could hear the multiplicity of the voices. Let us to ask ourselves many questions why we decided that every episode would have different themes. The first one that you actually heard is to what a dramaturg does and what they are. I reiterate that the answer that we construed is a structured majority from from the voice of creators that are not dramaturgs themselves. The community is focused on the collaboration of the dramaturgs, the groups that collaborate with the figure and the experiences that they've had. A third deals with who um, takes on this uh, role and to think on whether there are institutions or schools that are interested in this, recognizing the figure. For the, talks about the working conditions in Mexico and how dramaturgs produce the cult current cultural processes and it invites you to think as to why did you decide to become a dramaturg? Likely it would have been easier to have the dramaturgs themselves responding to these questions. So we wanted to confront this old myth that nobody knows what dramaturgs do in Mexico. So the five pot podcasts will be available in different platforms and we'll be happy to hear your uh, questions and recommendations about it. We're about to end. So I would like to thank these two amazing girls. The phase of adversity decided to continue on, on the path. As Mia said, they had more members and only the women Yeah, the end. I thank the people who helped us re making the vision of what a dramaturg in Mexico is. And I want to thank those that didn't want to collaborate with us. This also changed our point of view. In this project, I reiterate the necessity to open spaces of discovering this line of work in Mexico and Latin America. We need areas in which we can encounter each other, but also spaces of creativity. We need spaces to play, to doubt, to mistakes. And in this project, I found a space to recognize myself, understand that this line of work is not uh, about flying solo, that you, that everybody has their own way of doing research and creating, and the diversity and identity are also enriching in our creative processes. And from this project, I would like to point out the strength of the young people. At the beginning of the year, people asked me whether the youth uh, would be able to do dramaturgy. If the youth can do dramaturgy, or if it is a profession that requires more experience and age, and I believe that there is also a need for the sector to have an establishment of this profession. And the youth have responded to that call. You look for a better panorama, you find new motives to open up the way for you. And then I discovered that throughout this time, youth were the motor of or the drive of this new line of work. And it with them. And I find in this project that practice what we'll make of this line of work to be understood in this country in the way in which our our work is recognized, recognized as an active uh, part of the process. We can become more integrated. It would seem as if, though we do have a name, we don't really exist. So I desire them, other than just having study on this formation, we need new moments of creation for the dramaturgs of Mexico. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Sorry about that. He'll leave you with, with our social network. 
Do you want to come to us or for any questions, or comments? And we'll be happy to hear from you and uh, know of any questions you might have and to collaborate with you in the further, further down the line. Thank you.